Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Cavuto. I'm the editor and publisher at Neurotech Reports in San Francisco, California. And I'm going to talk to you today about the global neurotech device market, uh, including the uh, emergence of bioelectronic medicine. Uh, so before, before uh, I begin, I'd like to just give a little bit of background about Neurotech Reports. Uh, this is our 20th year of uh, publishing. We're a market intelligence uh, and uh, a trade publishing company in uh, the United States. Uh, our flagship publication, the Neurotech Business Report, uh, was launched in 2001. We also maintain a database of neuromodulation uh, products. We uh, uh, publish market research reports and white papers on the industry. Uh, and also hold our own conferences, including our 20th Annual Neurotech Leaders Forum, which is coming up uh, in November, November 16th and 17th, which will take place in San Francisco, uh, as well as uh, online. It'll be a hybrid event. We also offer consulting services to uh, the industry, to vendors of uh, uh, neuromodulation and uh, bioelectronic medicine products. Uh, and we have a paperback and ebook publishing imprint. Uh, this is a photo of our staff members, in addition to myself, Jennifer French, uh, as our senior contributing editor, Jeremy Koff, uh, an experienced uh, neuromodulation industry uh, professional, serves as our senior consulting editor and coordinates our uh, consulting services, uh, and Jojo Platt uh, is a uh, contributing editor. I want to talk a little bit about the market segments within Neurotech. Uh, the largest segment, uh, neuromodulation. This includes spinal cord stimulation systems, deep brain stimulation systems, vagus nerve stimulation uh, systems. These are devices that modulate the function of the nervous system, uh, spinal nerves, uh, um, the spinal cord or the brain itself, uh, to alleviate symptoms uh, of a neurological disorder. And neuroprosthetics, and uh, here's an example of a, a visual prosthetic, uh, Neural stimulation is being used to replace a lost function. Uh, cochlear implants, of course, another uh, example uh, of uh, implanted neuroprosthetics. In neural rehabilitation, you're using neurotechnology, including stimulation, to help restore the function, uh, restore a uh, neuromuscular system uh, to its prior state or as close to it as you can. And uh, finally, in neurosensing, we are, instead of delivering electrical energy, we are uh, sensing electrical energy from the nervous system. So examples of these devices are uh, EEG systems uh, or magnetic uh, uh, sensing systems. Now, there's a new field emerging called bioelectronic medicine, uh, and uh, it's a field that has multiple definitions. I'm gonna offer a few of them here. Uh, um, unfortunately, different organizations uh, have different meanings. Um, originally, uh, bioelectronic medicine was, uh, the term was used to describe uh, modulation of nerves that affect an end organ, uh, like the stomach or the spleen um, uh, or the liver. Um, over time, uh, some organizations, including DARPA uh, in the United States, have expanded that definition to include treatments for pain and inflammation, uh, stress, uh, psychological and psychiatric disorders, uh, et cetera. Um, so as I say, uh, uh, there's a, a wide overlap of uh, definitions here. Some uh, who use the term neuromodulation and bioelectronic medicine um, interchangeably. So this is how we kind of slice up the market. Um, if you look at this series of concentric circles, the smallest circle there, uh, organ stimulation, end organ stimulation, really represents that core um, segment of bioelectronic medicine, the, the strictest definition. Now, uh, as you expand these circles to include pain stimulation or even neuroprosthetics or other forms of neuromodulation, you can see that uh, you have a market that uh, uh, grows to 
uh, as we projected, eight billion dollars uh, uh, for 2020, growing uh, to uh, an excess of 16 billion uh, by 2025. Now, this data is from our market research report, uh, the market for bioelectronic medicine 2020 through 2025. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, let you know at the end uh, how you can get more information on that report. Uh, you can see from here, the blue represents those smallest uh, circle, the core indications within bioelectronic medicine, and the orange represents the uh, loosest definition of bioelectronic medicine uh, to include uh, a range of other applications. Now, uh, needless to say, there's been uh, an impact uh, in the U.S. and worldwide on uh, many segments of the neurotech industry, and one of the biggest segments uh, is spinal cord stimulation devices. Um, we've seen roughly a 30 to 35 percent decline uh, in calendar year 2020 as a result of the uh, pandemic, and our projection um, is that the market will begin to come back to 2019 levels um, next year and uh, growing again uh, by 2022. Uh, and this is from a related uh, publication of ours, the market for neuromodulation systems. Who are some of the major players uh, in the neurotech market? Well, Medtronic uh, uh, historically has been the market leader, both in spinal cord stimulation and brain stimulation. Um, but uh, we've also seen uh, uh, some other players uh, come along, uh, and that includes Abbott, uh, which uh, purchased St. Jude Medical uh, a few years back, including their neuromodulation franchise. Uh, Boston Scientific is another major player with a, a strong uh, neuromodulation uh, portfolio, both in uh, uh, pain stimulation and also in uh, brain stimulation. Nevro is a relatively uh, newer player in the neuromodulation industry uh, based in California, uh, primarily involved with uh, pain stimulation uh, for uh, um, back pain, uh, but they will uh, be branching out into other um, indications uh, in the future. So these four companies, uh, all public companies, are are the largest players in the neuromodulation segment. In the neurosensing segment, uh, Natus, uh, another, Natus Medical, another uh, California corporation, is the leader. And in neuroprosthetics, the Australian firm Cochlear uh, is the uh, market leader in um, uh, neuroprosthetics. Now, there are some emerging players coming out uh, in, uh, in this industry. Uh, on the bioelectronic medicine uh, front, uh, Setpoint Medical is a, a U.S. company um, that is uh, targeting inflammatory disorders. Um, it's a spin out from the Feinstein Institute uh, in New York. Another company, uh, CVRX in Minnesota, uh, is a uh, pursuing uh, applications uh, in uh, heart failure, uh, as well as uh, uh, related disorders. Uh, Galvani Bioelectronics is a, is a London-based company that was formed uh, as a joint venture between GSK, uh, the pharmaceutical company, and uh, Google. And Galvani is developing a range of bioelectronic medicine therapies. Finally, uh, an Australian startup called Saluda Medical uh, is offering a new um, uh, form of spinal stimulation utilizing closed loop stimulation. Um, they are not yet approved in the U.S., but uh, expect we expect them to be shortly, uh, and they are a selling product in um, Europe and in Australia. Um, we also think there's a strong possibility that this company uh, will be acquired by uh, either one of the major players in the market or by one of the new players uh, who have not yet entered the market, at least in a big way, uh, such as Johnson & Johnson or Stryker or, or GE uh, or even Philips. These are all companies that in the past have either invested in or joint ventured or partnered with some uh, form of neuromodulation or neurotechnology devices, um, but have yet to uh, establish a full-fledged uh, neurotech uh, 
uh, business unit. Uh, but uh, it could well be that these one of these players or some other large med tech uh, company uh, joins the uh, industry in the years ahead. Um, some new applications for bioelectronic medicine. Um, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has created an opportunity. There are a number of firms, including ElectroCore uh, and several uh, research institutions who are looking at either phrenic nerve stimulation or vagus nerve stimulation as a means to either alleviate uh, symptoms or in the case of phrenic nerve stimulation to wean patients off ventilators. Uh, there's also been some benefits uh, uh, on the regulatory side and on uh, the advent of telemedicine uh, that may help spur the growth of uh, of uh, the neurotech industry despite the impact of the pandemic. Uh, I want to close with just uh, a little um, a discussion of some of the new uh, devices and therapies utilizing non-invasive neuromodulation. Uh, one big application is in migraine. Here's four uh, different uh, competitors all using some form of non-invasive electrical stimulation uh, to treat migraine. Uh, Theranica uh, is an Israeli company that's uh, pursuing uh, an armband approach. Uh, ElectroCore uses a surface, uh, actually a neck-based uh, vagus nerve stimulation system. Uh, Neuroleaf uses uh, a, a cranial electrical stimulation uh, system uh, to treat uh, migraine, and Cephaly, uh, uh, which has a, a similar device uh, for doing uh, non-invasive uh, stimulation to treat uh, migraine. Also, uh, non-invasive neuromodulation is being used in, in uh, psychiatry. Um, Transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, uh, has, is now FDA approved uh, for treating a range of psychiatric disorders, initially uh, major depression. Um, and uh, so several of these firms are now also approved for uh, other disorders, uh, uh, including OCD and uh, uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, Neuronetics was the first firm to enter this market. Uh, um, but um, uh, other firms, including MagStim uh, and MagVenture, uh, NextStim and Brainsway, uh, have uh, also entered the market, uh, and they're all competing for uh, market share in the psychiatric disorder market. So that's a, a quick um, synopsis of the uh, neurotech uh, industry uh, and uh, the new emerging bioelectronic medicine field. Uh, I'd be happy to offer uh, more information or respond to any um, uh, questions. You can contact me by uh, email, uh, and here's my email address. And uh, I uh, hope that you all enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you.